Hey everybody and welcome to another model building workshop here at the Smith Hill Library in Providence, Rhode Island. I'm Mr. Allen. Uh, we're doing this on the Providence Community Library's YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. So today we're going to talk about a few uh, vintage model kits, some old companies that you don't really see around now. I'm going to start with uh, this one here. This is UPC Models. Okay, so this is from the 1960s most likely or maybe early 70s. Um, it says price in Canada a dollar sixty nine. <laughs> so yeah, this is going back a ways. So UPC, yeah, Universal Power Master Corporation, as it says there in the corner. So doing a quick uh, research on this, it seems like what they did is they were doing kind of reboxing of Japanese model kits of the nineteen sixties, and you know releasing them in America. So, and elsewhere, I guess. But um, this is the British Beaufort torpedo bomber. And the parts are, well, kind of what you would expect for a model of that period. You know, they're not awful. One thing that's interesting, I don't know if you can pick it up on the on your uh, screen there, but there's in the plastic is there's molded spots for where the decals are supposed to sit. There's like these engraved um, circles there for where they're, they're supposed to put the decals. And of course, the decals I have the original decals here. Maybe they do. Here's the instruction sheet. Gives you an idea of the age because this is extremely yellowed. Yeah, delicate. <laughs> so here's your instructions, which not the best. And the back has the helpful hints and how to do model building. I think it's interesting that it's over here. It's showing an Italian fascist aircraft which is kind of an odd choice for uh, examples, but I think it's kind of interesting if they would have that. Um, showing you how to use the glue, how to paint, um, how to do yeah, different types of things. And if you look, it gives you even more ideas of what some of this stuff is, because this is showing a frog models box down here. So this is probably an old frog mold and not a Japanese one that they uh, repackaged. And Frog was a model company out of Britain from the, I guess it ran from like, I guess the company was in business like the 30s to the 70s, according from like a, an online source I looked at earlier. Uh, so Frog was uh, making some of these molds, and I'll show you more about that in just a second. So, I mean, there is some flash on some of these parts that you're going to have to clean up, you know, and trim, bumps and whatnot, clear plastic. So it's not terrible. The detail is not particularly good. Not horrible, but not, you know, typical for that 60s, 70s look. Kind of looks like an old Airfix kit in a way. But, you know, fog models. Okay, here's some, looks like I've got a bunch of different decal sheets to try to salvage this kit. Here's the original one, which looks like it has got no prayer of working. And if it did, I don't know if I'd want them because they're so yellowed and look pretty depressing. Um, and, you know, you can get, you know, replacement decals like this set here. This is from Tasman model decals. This is out of uh, New Zealand with the Kiwi here. So, anyway. So that's the UPC model company. And speaking of frog, we're moving on to other frog molds that moved on to Russia. And this is Novo models. Got a couple of examples here. And Novo, like I said, they took the frog model molds from England. They were sent to Russia, and, and then Russia began to produce these and sell them under their name, Novo. 
like in the 70s and 80s. And so let's see, okay, this one. The instructions are pretty basic here. It does show you the options for, you know, mod uh, for variance, which says A or B. A few very simple diagrams with the no glue symbols and things like that. Listed in a number of different languages, a few helpful hints on the back. There's not much for paint suggestions in in there. Decals are looking kind of uh, worse for wear. This has the Australian markings, which Basic British Commonwealth markings over in the Pacific, they would just remove the red circles in, in the roundel because the, I guess the, the presence of the red tended to cause problems because you know nervous allied gunners would see the red and see, oh my God, it's a Japanese plane and fire at it even though it wasn't Japanese. So basically every allied country in the Pacific theater has got any red off the airplane just to be safe. So getting back to the molds, all right, so <laughs> as you can see, this is in a lovely mustard cheese yellow, some kind of like fast food color. Uh, so this is not uncommon for you know communist block models from the 70s and 80s that they, uh, yeah, that they would just use whatever color they had for, to put uh, their models and, into molds. This is a nice paperclip holding the bag together. I don't know if this is original, if that came from whoever purchased this later and whatever store, and this has been kind of bouncing from model shop to model shop and antique stores for the last few decades. Now right, here's your painting guide on the back, showing a couple of uh, Australian examples. This was an American bomber from early in World War II, intended to get moved on to uh, Australia, and they used them throughout the Pacific. A couple of different options there. So that's what you're dealing with. I'll show you another one so you get a better example of what the parts are looking like, what the molds are. These boxes are not the best cardboard, but that's part of the, uh, the appeal of this stuff is that it was very cheap to buy. I mean, it, it, they produced it very cheaply and they could sell these very cheaply. So this was a fun kit to, to get a hold of. They were not expensive. You have fun doing it. I mean, but there is going to be extra work with these because the moldings, all right, this is the Tupelo SB2 bomber. Interesting, it has options for skis. Okay, so you can see that these are going to need trimming and, and sanding and lots of extra work. So there's a lot of cleanup to kits like this. Again, just in a bag. And the parts, well, they're not terrible, you know, but they are going to need cleanup. You know, you get big chunks of plastic hanging and you're going to have to trim. You can see up in the front up here, there's lots of stuff there. You're going to need to file sand, whatever. Again, some decals here. Very yellow, very old. Probably not going to work. Going to need to look for replacements, most likely. Although I don't think it'll be difficult to find them for this. So, so these are going to be a little extra work, and that's probably the challenge to see how good a kit you can make out of something that's old and doesn't have the detail of stuff that we're used to from today's models. So this one is, it's all in Russian. So this is, you know, very Soviet. It's all Russian. The instruction sheet, which is probably the same as the frog models, probably just, re, you know, just copied. But it's just basically showing a bunch of numbers and diagrams. There's not a lot of clarity there other than the glue and no glue symbols. <laughs> And the A, B option things that they suggest. You know, you have an option for either the wheels or the skis, depending on how you want to do it. Single or three blade, uh, yeah, 
two blade or three blade propellers and one blade propeller isn't going to do much for anything is it <laughs> so you have that so again inexpensive fun kits and I can show you a few other examples of how these might have been marked you know, for example there is the uh, Bulgarian one there's a Russian one here I found online which is natural metal with some green overspray for camouflage I think actually maybe I showed you the back of the box I hope it was. if I can get this box back together again because Novo tended to use this this blue and it's very flimsy cardboard Oops, I to hold this up, but I'm making a mess. So you have the, the options there, Spanish Civil War, Czechoslovakia, and the Soviet Union during the Winter War with Finland. That's what was included. Though, like I said, I doubt highly those details are going to work. But there's lots of ways you can paint and do these things. Uh, Widely used aircraft. The Bulgarians get a hold of the ex Czech aircraft. The Germans sold them, the former Czech airplanes. Uh, China had these as well, nationalist China. So these, these were used quite a bit in the early part of World War II. Okay, so moving on to one last um, model company that you don't really see around anymore. Another vintage model company is Supermodel. And Supermodel, I, I like these kits. Um, I think the detail is pretty pretty good, not as good as stuff today. But some of these molds are still around. Italeray is still using these, or Italieri, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, Supermodel was an Italian company making you know, Italian subjects. And I thought these were great fun because these are, you know, again, aircraft you don't really see other model manufacturers making. So their instructions aren't bad, although it's all in Italian. There's a little bit of other languages here and there. It's going to blow up style instructions. They get a little busy. I mean, this diagram is a bit busy to, to look at. Yeah, there's a lot going on in that diagram. I would have, would have preferred more diagrams than looking at that congested mess but I did build this as a teen and I've had kids build these at the model building workshop here at the library so we've managed sometimes I just would make a photocopy of this instruction sheet and blow up certain parts so they could see you know make sub assemblies out of these diagrams so that they wouldn't get overwhelmed but these aren't too bad to build uh, the detail is okay it's I'll show you. Like the parts, the molding isn't bad, and the flash isn't terrible. And like I said, a number of these kits have gone on, you know, and they're still being produced. I don't know about this one. I don't think I've seen this one around in a while. So this was a Fiat G55 for the experimental mount for a torpedo. So this was uh, a late war Italian idea. So the detail is pretty decent, and it does, you know, typical of like 1970s model kits. It's got the stand if you want to use that. So the detail is not bad. Decals, they've been yet they're yellowed. Uh, they may still work, but there is some yellowing there. So you have the uh, this Italian fascist uh, northern Italy here. So these are all from after the. Uh, Italian surrender in 1943. So you've got the co-belligerent Air Force here with the Roundel and the Northern Fascist uh, puppet state here. Of course, you could also not put the torpedo on there and make it a typical G55 fighter. So, but that's supermodel, and there's the painting scheme, which is gives you a couple options, and I think they're pretty well. Done, a little busy, but they give you the different color codes and so forth here to look at what the colors are. So you have the camouflage version, or you've got the post-war 
all silver Italian Air Force fighter from I think the late 40s. It's like natural metal. You know, it's, like I said, the top one is the uh, the fascist uh, experimental torpedo plane that they were working on for around 44. So anyway, that's a look at some of these vintage model company kits from yesteryear. So Supermodel, Novo, and UPC. Okay, we'll see you next time on the Model Building Workshop. Take care. Bye.